Have you ever dreamt of making the greatest railway journey in the world? Today, you are welcome to join me on my Trans-Siberian trip. I'm Nina, and it has been the second day on that train for me. And I started that trip in my home city, the oldest one in Siberia. So if you had taken that journey from Moscow, it would have been the fourth day for you already. And I'm moving to Baikal, and we're around 400 kilometers left, so just around the corner. And today, instead of making another video like I'm eating the cheapest noodles in the third class train, I want to show you something different. Another side, a bigger picture that would help you to understand what's going on in Siberia and in Russia. I'll be talking about the biggest disadvantage of that Trans-Siberian trip for travelers. But first, Check the train out. Well, that's how that's how people enter that train, and that was the first big railway station on my way, Novosibirsk. Just around just around 17 hours on that train, or 1,300 kilometers from my Siberian home city, and that's how I entered that train 17 hours ago. Now, let's take a look, let's take a closer look at the Trans-Siberian Railway. That road was built over a century ago to connect the whole country, to connect the European part of Russia, and St. Petersburg used to be the capital at the time, to connect the European part of Russia with Siberia. And most cities here, the majority of people live, are in the south of Siberia, along the Trans-Siberian Railroad. To me, is my home city, the oldest city in Siberia and number four by population. Almost one million people live here. Novosibirsk is not the capital of Siberia, as some of you may think, but it's the biggest city here. Over one and a half million people live in that city. Krasnoyarsk, we passed that city at night, and it's the second biggest city in Siberia. Around one million two hundred thousand people live here. And then Irkutsk, the biggest city close to Lake Baikal. And in fact, as you can see, I've passed half of Siberia on that trip. And once again, you are welcomed to join me. And that's what you can see through the window. Some train stations, cities, villages, but not that many. Just few of them, in fact. And first of all, nature. Just nature for many many hours now let's check out what's inside that train carriage by the way these guys are my neighbors for today's uh, hockey teenage team we traveled from one siberian town to another to take part in a competition and hockey is a big big deal here but by the way that could be already a disadvantage a challenge for some travelers because you can't really choose your neighbors we are at the very beginning of that train carriage. Now, up to 54 seats are available there and free hot and cold water on the right. So I was fine with my neighbors and now I know all those teenage jokes. Honestly speaking, they are not that different from those jokes we had at this age. But once again, that would be a challenge for some people too. at trash can here and one could buy some drinks, snacks, noodles and coffee here too. Now, let's take a closer look at the timetable. Moscow Vladivostok, a legendary, a legendary train because it's the longest rail journey in the world. Some people are passing by when they are checking out that timetable. Everything is written both in Russian and in English and here you can find all the train stations on the way and on the left in bold time of arrival and departure and between them the number of minutes the train stays at each station. There are around 9000 kilometers between Moscow and Vladivostok Vladivostok is in the far east of Russia, close to Japan. And in blue on the right, you could find time zones. 
there are seven seven time zones between some people are passing by again there's seven time zones between moscow and vladivostok it means that the time difference between those two cities is seven hours can you imagine that now we are arriving at another train station and i should add that russian trains are the most efficient means of transport in that country because they run like clockwork with hardly any exceptions they always arrive on time we keep on exploring that carriage that the third class the cheapest one and later i'll explain why i chose this one i had to kind of Finally, the end of that carriage and there's several new things that I haven't seen before. First of all, these recycling bins here for food waste and paper, plastic and glass. I hope they do recycle all that. And there is a shower in WC. Why is that important? Because you need seven, seven full days to make the whole trip on that train from Moscow to Vladivostok and I believe it's important to have a shower. Please let me know below in the comments what do you think about that? Does this third class train carriage, the cheapest one, look comfortable enough for you to take such a long trip? Now let's talk about the biggest disadvantage for travelers that nobody is talking about in these free advanced second class coupe. You can see another train passing by here and i was very surprised when i got that coupe i'll tell you in the very end how that happened because it's very unusual people people are traveling a lot in russia and all those trains are usually full so you may get some free places somewhere but you'll never get a free coupe like that or free six places in the third class train you could see some landscape here but there is so much white in Siberia in winter that sometimes you'll get just the right picture. My camera is good, but by the way, if you want to support my work so that I could buy a better camera, you'll find the information below how to do that. Now, let's talk about the biggest disadvantage and you would like it if you're interested in business and money. So the biggest disadvantage is, is lack of competition here. All these railroads, so the Trans-Siberian Railway is a part of that Russian railroad system. All those railways are run by one company, the vast majority of them, by one company, the Russian Railways. <laughs> and uh, this company is state-owned, moreover, it's monopoly. To be precise, it's a natural monopoly. What does that mean? The cost, the price for setting up that network and running it is so high that the most efficient number of those players is just one. That happens in many countries, uh, especially in public utilities. For example, those companies that are providing water and electricity. So the same happens here with railroads. As a result, so it's monopoly. As a result, this company doesn't have to compete for customers, doesn't have to commit, compete with other companies too. Why did people choose these trains in the past? Because they were cheaper, they were much cheaper than airlines. I remember as a kid, as a teenager, I was born in Siberia. We always traveled on trains. It took some days. But it was so much cheaper than airlines, airplane tickets. An airline ticket was something extraordinary, something very special back then. Then, um, when I moved to Moscow to study and uh, I traveled to my home city in summer. My home city is the oldest city in Siberia. It's 2,000 kilometers from Moscow and it takes around two days on a train to travel there or two and a half hours on a plane. And maybe the first two years at my university, I took trains because they were cheaper. But then something changed. What changed? The competition between airlines in Russia. So there used to be only one state-owned airline in the Soviet Union, Aeroflot. It still works, even nowadays. 
But after the collapse of the Soviet Union, several big players appeared in the market. And they started competing for customers. They started competing with each other. As a result, the price for an airline ticket has been decreasing all these years. But the price for a ticket, for a train ticket, has been increasing. Nowadays, a train ticket costs as much as a plane ticket. So you pay the same with some additional costs including, included. So, for example, you pay for taxi to the airport and back, or you pay for food if you travel two days on train. So the price is the same. And from my point of view, it doesn't make any sense economically now, right? So you pay the same, you travel with less comfort on trains, and it takes so much more time. Now, let's compare prices. I'm pretty sure if you're from the West, those prices would be cheap for you, but public services are cheaper in Russia. So please share your point of view below in the comments how much the ticket would cost in your country. Once again, around 2,000 kilometers, one and a half or two days on a train, or two and a half hours on a plane. How much would that cost in your country? So when last summer, I was comparing those prices, I discovered that the price both for a train and for an airplane would be around 100 US dollars, so the same price. And I decided to take this Trans-Siberian trip only because I wanted to shoot some videos for you. And you enjoyed it, but I didn't enjoy the trip that much. Why? Another consequence, quite a bad service. Not always, but sometimes. And by the way, that's how I got that free coupe too. What happened? I moved to a restaurant carriage, with a carriage that prepares they cook warm food and you can buy it and uh, a hostess there was suddenly very rude to me i'm not tolerant to such things and i discussed that with the train manager she was very professional she solved that problem and she wanted to offer me some free food as a compensation but i saw that free coupe it's free only for one hour after that some people would come and ask could i just get this free coupe just for one hour before somebody comes, that would be the best compensation for me because I could work here. It's not an instruction how to get free places now. It just happened. When I planned this trip to Baikal, to Irkutsk, the biggest city close to the Baikal Lake, now in winter, I discovered to travel from my home city in the west of Siberia. So two days too, around 2,000 kilometers and around two days on a train. And I discovered that airplane tickets are cheaper, are cheaper than train tickets. Can you imagine that? They're cheaper. And especially second class train tickets, uh, so both airplane tickets are 30-40% cheaper. But I needed to make a stopover somewhere. Doesn't make any sense economically anymore, right? Only if you buy a third class train, and I did that again because I didn't want to pay much more for trains and I wanted to shoot videos for you. That's why I decided to take that trip. But otherwise, I wouldn't take that train, honestly speaking. Uh, and this third class train did cost not that much. And it did cost around, I guess, around 70 US dollars. Third class was so the cheapest one. But the second class, that a bit more comfortable, they did cost at least twice as much. And I could have bought just an airplane ticket cheaper. I hope you enjoyed that video. I'm really happy that I got that. Free advanced second class Cooper, that's very unusual. <laughs> I had to fight for my rights <laughs> to do that. Um, Please feel free to ask any questions you may have about Siberia, about the Trans-Siberian trip too. For sure. Well, the final thing, the very final thing. For sure, I would recommend you to do to do that trip. Absolutely, 100%. It's an incredible experience when you can enjoy that landscape. It's not that comfortable too, but quite okay. And you will remember all your life about that. So for sure, I would recommend you to do that. But you could also, but now you know what's the biggest disadvantage. Not that much comfort, sometimes bad service, and the price is higher than it should be, especially now. Right? So you could plan your trip differently. For example, you could travel to a big city in Siberia, 
from Moscow, from St. Petersburg, and then take this train for one or two days. And you could enjoy. I think you'll get the same experience. Don't forget to subscribe. Stay warm. And see you soon.